like y'all. I was in Columbia voting today. <laughs> I would like y'all to meet um, Shane Massey. He is our new senator that took Jake Knox's place over there by me. Oh, that's a good thing. you Jake Knox down. Sorry. <laughs> Introduce yourself. Tell us about yourself. Some people don't know you. Don't know who you are. and Don't know how intelligent you are. You might be better spokesman for me than I would be for myself. <laughs> um, I, uh, I live in Edgefield, and uh, I was elected to the Senate in 2007. In a special election, I replaced Tommy Moore, uh, who, y'all might know Tommy Moore, right? Ran for governor in 06 against Sanford. Uh, yeah. He was um, thoroughly trounced in 2006, I think it was. And then in 2007, he got a six-figure offer from some lobbying firms and uh, decided to trade six figures above the 10,000 bucks in the Senate. So he, took, he took that job. Uh, he had been there for 15 years and then I, I ran. We had a six-way primary and, and, and I ran and uh, won that, obviously. But uh, I was the first Republican ever to hold that seat. <clears throat> um, that had to but, general election, I ran against an incumbent House member, and I won by 114 votes. And then, uh, then I had to run again in 2008, and I think I was a top target in 2008. It really came after me pretty hard. Uh, and uh, so we won that one, too. And so now I'm back and then with the redistricting that we had after the census in 2010. Because there was a lot of growth over here, y'all know very well, right? There's a lot of growth over here. There wasn't as much growth, ironically, surprisingly, actually. I thought there was going to be more growth than, than what we had. Because I, I have my existing district, is I have all of Edgeville County, all of McCormick, about a third of Saluda, and about a third of Aiken. And we thought there was going to be more growth in Aiken than there was. Uh, that didn't happen. And so the only place to pick up people was to come towards the middle. And so that's, that's what happened. So, uh, I picked up right at 20,000 people over here in Lexington again. Picked up probably about um, 8,000 new folks in Saluda. So a good bit of my district is, is new. Uh, but I still, so it's five counties now. It's a big area. It goes it goes all the way from the northern part of the former county, up around County and Baltimore, and all the way to downtown Lexington. That's a long way. I was going to say, what part of Lexington County do you Generally speaking, I, I come into Lexington by way of Saluda, um, north of Batesburg, and south 378. 378 is the, the boundary up there. We go all the way into downtown. Uh, I have I have the old courthouse, but not the new courthouse. That South Lake is the, yeah, is the line, on. and then it goes down to I-20, and I-20 is the border down to Gilbert, and I don't go any further south than Gilbert. I've got some, so I've got, I think it's three something. That's so confusing. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's one of the fastest growing parts of Lexington County. Yeah. 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 Growing yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry? How many precincts? That's what you're saying. Nine in Lexington. Yeah, in Lexington County. Yeah, right. yeah. there's two in Austin, right by the two, right? Well, it's roughly 10% of precincts. Well, but, but I remember, I mean, when you think of the primary, how many voters are out? It's uh, Gilbert, Gilbert Summit, and uh, Brown, Brown Hill. Uh, both of the boroughs, Lexington 2. We got Park, we split Lake Murray 2. Right across Murray 2. Uh, Lexington 2 is about 20 miles away from Lake Murray. Murray 2 is about 20 miles away from Lake Murray. Murray 2 is about 20 miles away from Lake Murray. Holland Creek, just, just about all of Holland Creek. There's a little sliver that's cut out. And then Ridge Road uh, is split as well. Those are all of them. It's, it's uh, I think just over 20,000 people. And probably 17,000 of those were in the census count, 17,000 of them were voting age. So it's a, it's actually a good chunk of my, of my vote. Probably about 30% of primary vote will come out of the election of the county board. So tell us what your uh, platform is. Tell us what you, how conservative or unconservative you are. Tell us. Uh, I sound like a lawyer. 
spending um, at SLED, um, at the, the Highway Patrol, um, I'm trying to think what, what else. I mean, I think one of our biggest problems with state budget is that, look, here's what happens. When we have good, good revenue years, we spend all the money. When we have bad revenue years, we don't have enough built up in reserves to deal with it. So we cut pretty deeply. And, and so what you see, if you look at it, if it was graphed, you'll see peaks and valleys in South Carolina's budget years. I mean, it's, there's, there's no consistency at all. Um, and last year was one of the best examples of that, because last year, uh, last year the Medicaid agency, Health and Human Services, ran a quarter of a billion dollar deficit. And I, I was very involved in that fight. I, like, I hate deficits. I think it's the height of irresponsibility. And actually, that was, if there's anything good that came out of that, it was that it put a whole lot of attention on the Budget Control Board. And that's what helped us as far as really taking the fight to the Budget Control Board but later on. And I was very involved in the restructuring effort, too, because um, I can't stand the Budget Control Board. Uh, and because uh, that was the thing that really got me. Y'all know, the Budget Control Board approved the deficit last year, and there was nothing that the legislature could do about it. Because I even introduced legislation to undo it. Well, the interesting thing, of course, is that that legislation was referred to the Finance Committee. Well, the Finance Chairman is on the Budget Control Board. So I didn't even get a hearing, uh, even though we talked about it a bunch on the floor. Uh, there are some, some things, especially, the, especially last year, where I probably did vote for an increase because we've had some real cuts over the last few years. Uh, but the things that concern me the most have been law enforcement, um, and I think I voted for money for new school buses last year because we haven't bought school buses in 12 years. And we had a bus over in Horry County that caught on fire. So we bought a bunch of new school buses about 15 years ago. And a lot of those are starting to rotate out. They need to be rotated out. So I voted for some money for that. Things that are mandated by the state to the counties, which cause the counties to have to increase ready to, to cover things that the state says, hey, you got to do this, but we're not going to fund it. Mm -hmm. Because we're going to be the good guys and not raise taxes. We want you to be the bad guys. You figure that out. Taxes because you're the mandate, so you got to do it. There's no funding, but you got to do it. Well, what about those things? Do we know these are those mandates? Or have you tried it's, it's, actually, it's actually been a little bit even worse than that because there, there is some money that goes to, to the camp, to local government commonly referred to as the local government fund, aid subdivisions, things of that nature. But th that money is designed to pay for those mandates. Because there are certain things, there are lots of things that the state mandates. For instance, we tell the, the counties that they have to pay their magistrates a certain amount of money. Um, we, 
we've got supplements for, probably even have a supplement for the auditor, don't we? Do we have a state supplement for the auditor salary? Yeah, for the treasurer. Y'all cut it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> we require, the state requires each county Good to point. the office. All right, so uh, but what's happened over the last few years is that money has been cut. So, so that's been an even bigger problem with the counties um, because, you know, they've got the cap on what they can, what they can raise revenue-wise. Um, and the state funding has, has decreased, yeah, see, but the demand is really good guys. You're cutting. Really oh, that's exactly what it is. And it goes straight back, you know, it's that's right. Then, then, then that's exactly right. And where do they get their tax money? Property taxes. That's right. Which I think is the worst thing. And, uh, so, why not unmandate some things? Well, last year in the budget, we actually tried it. There were about seven or eight of us who said, look, if we're going to cut the local government funding, then what we need to do is we need to give the local governments more flexibility in how they can how they can spend what they get. I understand, but who was it that said there is no tribe and we do or don't? Can or can't, no tribe. Yeah, that sounds that sound like something Yoda said. I was going to say, yeah, they got the Star Wars. That's, uh... Yeah. Well, when I say tribe, what I mean is we offer the amendments of the lost. So I guess we did, but I mean, we put forth the idea. You know how when you raise your children, you teach them that, that the only way you won't succeed is if you give up. Don't you'll see it. You'll see an attempt again.